So the wall units in this kitchen, they've got a, a cornice at the top and a lighting panel at the bottom. It's all the same stuff. Uh, it is basically this. So this, uh, it, it protrudes past the front of the unit um, to, to sit basically flush with the face of the doors. So uh, a little tip here to, for when it comes to setting and marking it is the overall uh, width of this is 50 mil and the doors with a tiny gap, they're only 18 mil. They, stick, they will stick out 20 mil in front of the carcass. So what I've done here is I've ripped a piece of MDF 30 mil and then what I do, this helps me mark, is I then put this piece of MDF, um, I hold it flush with the front of the carcass and then I simply run my pencil up the back and that then gives me the point that the lighting permit and cornice fits to and it's also really handy when you're cutting uh, the mitres, uh, these internal and external mitres which I'll show you up top. So here up top there's an internal mitre uh, to go on the pelmet here and we need to mark it. So again what I do is put my 30mm um, bit of timber here and then simply what I do is mark down the back of it. Um, hang on, I'll just get that clamp again. So I would hold that piece of MDF, that's my 30mm MDF space in there. And then what I'll do is run my pencil down the back of it. And this is the back line. Can you see that? That's the back line of uh, where my cornice is going. And if I do the same on this side, when I start to be able to hold the camera. So then what I do is same again, I'm just trying to reach over there and put my pencil down the back there. And then now when I come to, to measure um, where, how I'm going to cut this pelmet, I've got a measuring point, and that's the external point of the internal mite, if that makes sense. It just makes it much easier to because you've got an exact point to work to. So now uh, I've done that, you can see that I've got all of my, all of my measuring points. That's where the, the back side of the lighting permit goes. And then this is the measurement I can come to. This is the external part of the internal mitre. So I can just measure from, from that point uh, to this point. And I know that'll be accurate when I fit it. And same again, I can measure from that point. That'll be the external part of the mitre. And then up to here, which will be the internal part of the mitre from the back. So it just makes it nice and easy, gives you something definite to measure to. So I've just got another little tip here. I know that um, this mark we've got on here is the backside of the, of the mitre, but when we put our um, timber on in this instance, I'm not measuring, I'm actually putting the, the, the pelmet on it and I'm gonna physically mark it. So rather than me having to crane, I can't get my head around there and crane around the back to put the mark on the back. All I've done here is this is the back mark. So I've just marked it on the front here. Then when I take it to the saw, I'll put a square cut through here. And then I know that that is the back edge of the cut. And then I'll just mitre from that point. It just makes it a bit easier than straining over the back. <laughs> and um, it's super accurate and measuring's great, but this is absolutely accurate because we're we're, we're transferring the mark from the actual carcass onto the pelmet.
So this uh, lighting baffle and cornice um, is uh, quite heavily plastic coated. It's a gloss finish, plastic coated MDF. And it's really important that you take your time when cutting your mitres and any cuts that you do because there really is nowhere to hide. Um, you know, if your cuts aren't nice and tight, it shouldn't be particularly difficult to be honest because the, the mitre saws that we use nowadays, I mean, the mitre saw that I use is an ELU, a PS274, and it's 27 years old and it's really, really accurate. So, you know, if you take your time uh, with these, even some of the cheaper, a mitre saws can create a nice tight joint and you know this is the sort of part of the satisfaction for me of doing a job like this is when you get these lovely you know neat lines get it all nice and adjusted up and it looks really really smart so I'm pleased with how that's how that's come out Right, so that's about as far as I can go on this kitchen. I know it looks quite unfinished, but uh, that bank of wall units is in. Um, we're now just waiting for a replacement 450 base carcass and a 450 wall carcass. And then once that's in, I can get those fitted, fit the end panel back on. Uh, and then when the plumber comes, I can fit that cabinet and get that all finished. Um, the plimps will go on again once the plumber's finished, the electrician's finished, just need to get, in case I need to get in there. The next thing probably for me to do uh, will be when the appliances turn up, which I think is sometime soon, to fit the integrated washing machine in there and the integrated dishwasher in there. And then I'll get all of the doors uh, on the front of those run of base units. So it is a bit, it's a little bit, it's not frustrating that you can't get the job all finished in one go, but I've got this whole uh, bungalow to second fix now. So I'm gonna be here for a little while anyway. So I'll just drop back onto this kitchen and finish it as and when um, the bits and bobs need doing. And I may just do a sort of final part video just with the whole thing complete. I may be able to film a bit more of me doing these bits and bobs, but I don't think it's particularly entertaining watching me put uh, integrated appliances in, but I'll probably do a little video just to finish off, uh, to show you it all, all finished. <laughs>